Bank of America and Phil, they may be laying out a bear case for Tesla, but you're actually you're taking the other side of that trade. Give us your sense of your rating and your price target for Tesla. Yeah, sure. We have a three hundred five dollar uh, price target for Tesla. Uh, we actually raised it significantly from 212 because now we're starting to model autonomy and the impact of robotaxi and FSD software licensing, which we think is going to really be the story. They're trying to get as many Teslas on the road because they want to push autonomy. Uh, in fact, for robotaxis is 70 percent of our valuation now uh, for, te for Tesla. So we really think autonomy is the big push and that's what's driving our higher price target. Okay, but autonomy is honestly just a, a little bit away. It's going to be a while before we get to full autonomous vehicles anywhere in the world, especially here in the United States, a lot of regulation. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit more about what Phil was talking about, these Chinese EV makers coming into Europe. So let's just say they continue to see sust sustained success there in Europe. What does it mean for the U.S. auto market? What big player here in the United States may potentially face the biggest negative impact if they are able to succeed in Europe and also cross over here to the U.S.? Sure, and I want to push back a little actually on, on the Europe analogy. I was actually the, the European analyst for RBC for four years before now being global and lived in Europe. And I can tell you, Europe loves their national champions. If you go to Italy, what do you see? Fiat. You go to Germany, you see Volkswagen. You go to France, you see Renaults and Peugeots. There's a reason for it. The, the Europeans tend to buy their own products. They're locally produced. They're expensive to make because of labor costs, et cetera. Okay. It'll be difficult for the Chinese, I think, to actually penetrate uh, the European market. Look how many uh, Japanese cars you see in Europe. Not, well, not very but Tom, much. What about what about the U.S. though? Because we see tons of Japanese, sure. South Korean cars here. We don't have that yeah. same uh, love for our domestic champions here. That's a good point. Uh, but I do wonder if the Chinese OEMs wind up effectively replacing the Japanese, who aren't really being as aggressive on electrification. The Chinese are. Um, but at the end of the day, who are the main incumbents in the U.S.? Ford, GM. Atlantis, these are pickup trucks, SUV territory. That's not really where these Chinese uh, EVs are playing. Uh, they're coming in really at the smaller end, lower, uh, smaller battery size, uh, less battery range. Okay. In the US, you do need bigger battery range. We got wide expansive spaces, range anxiety and performance, especially is a requirement. Tom, I want to talk to you about charging, as a matter of fact. Obviously, Tesla stock, it really popped on that news that it, its charging would be used by Ford and GM. How do the EV Chinese makers fit into this story? And can Tesla actually benefit from these Chinese EV makers entering the U.S. market if they're willing to adopt or if they may have to adopt Tesla's charger? Yeah, I mean, it's always good to be the standard, right? You want to be the standard on charging. Um, it may not necessarily be a big financial windfall for Tesla, but what it does do is show that their platform is the kind of winning platform. And connecting back to what we are talking about earlier about autonomy, this allows them, we think, to license software to other OEMs, including the Chinese OEMs. Uh, there's not that many players that are doing autonomy software. Look at FSD, how many miles are on the road, how much data they have, the advantage they right. have. So we look at charging as a way to kind of Trojan horse in the door and okay. sell FSD and software. So let me ask you, and we got to let you go after this. You said about 70% of your call on Tesla is because of robo-taxis. How much of it is the charger story? We actually don't really include it in our uh, valuation of financials. It's just 70% robotaxi, 20% FSD, 10% cars. We just want it to be really simple and just look at those three items. And we're looking at like 2040, 2035 and discounting it back. The, 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 the opportunity is so massive for these things that we think this is enough to carry the story for this stock for several years to come.